The morning watercolor class. Today we are going to learn how to draw and paint um, gems and crystals and geodes. Uh, these are kind of fun objects to know how to draw and paint and I can't wait to show you so stay tuned. Just a reminder of the materials you'll need today. Watercolors of course, um, your paper towel, your cup of water, your brushes, and a pencil. I'm going to do mine on two half sheets of paper, the gems on one half sheet and the crystal, or I mean, I'm sorry, the geode on the next half sheet of paper. You can do them really big if you'd like, or if you want to save paper, um, you can do two half sheets as well. So I've taped one half sheet to my board and I'm ready to go um, with my drawing of some gems. I'm going to draw these step by step with you in the video, but I'm also going to be adding some um, instructions visually um, as documents on Google Classroom, and you can print those out or look at them on your computer and help you if you kind of forget what comes next when you're after you're done watching the video. Alright, so my first gemstone I'm going to make is going to have six. I'm sorry, three kind of edges. And it's going to have points on the top and points on the bottom. I'm going to start with a point up here. And I'm going to leave a space and make a point down here. And then I'm going to connect those points with some straight lines. Now I'm going to start at my top point and make a, like a skinnier point inside of it. So it almost looks like the start of an A. And the same thing happens down here. Next, I am going to draw a straight line to close off those triangles, and then another line to close off these triangles. Lastly, I'm going to connect at the corners of these triangles with the corners of the top triangles like that. And now I am done with my outline of a gem. Now we're going to make a different style of gemstone. So we're going to start with trapezoid. A trapezoid shape has two parallel lines and then these lines are going to be not parallel but they would intersect if they touched up here. Didn't think you'd be learning geometry in art class, did you? And then we're going to add a triangle down here. Now we want to have kind of a zigzag design that goes up and down in this. Oops, you know what? I need my eraser. I want that line that comes up to end up over here. I think I need to erase all that. Even the teachers make mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes. I want it to go to. Yeah. There. That's how I want it. And then each point that touches that bottom line, one, two, three on mine, is going to end up down here. There's going to be a line from that point to the very bottom point. You can use a ruler if you want to make them nice and straight. I'm just going to freehand it. Alright, so now we have one of these types of gemstones and one of these types of gemstones. Now we're going to do some painting of them. 
But actually, I think I'm going to add one more type of gemstone kind of in the middle here. Get rid of these shiny lines because they're in my path. So this kind of gemstone is one that is kind of irregular shaped. So it's not necessarily any specific shape. It's just going to have a lot of straight edges. And you get to kind of decide what that looks like. Now I'm going to decide where I want the top of my gem to be, and I'm going to add a shape to make that be the top. I'm going to use straight edges with points like that. That's a, the top of my gem. Now every time there's a point, I'm going to connect those points to the points on my bottom part here. Now I've made the facets of my gem. So it's similar to what we already did, but it, they're more irregular and not um, unified. Right, and you, these can turn out to look like really anything. There's another one more that I'll try to show you. So I'll start with a similar shape to what I have right here. And I'm going to add some dots first instead of a shape. This is going to be kind of the top of my gem. So that's another kind of irregular gem as well. Alright, now we're going to paint them. The first thing I want to talk about before we start painting is the, our color scheme. I want you to think about that before you start putting color on your paper. What is going to be the color scheme of each gem? So within the one gem you want to stick with analogous colors. Um, so I think for this gem I'm going to use some cool colors. I think that purple, this blue violet is going to be my main color and I'm going to use this like blue violet, blue and even a little blue-green in this one. Maybe some regular violet too, but this is going to be my neighbor colors that my gem is going to be made up of. I want to start like we always do by swirling my brush in the water, tapping it off, getting some paint prepared on my palette, And then, similar to a lot of things that we've been doing lately, we are going to do these gems where we do wet on wet. We're going to start with wet on dry, a line or two, and then we're going to do each shape individually, kind of wet on wet, blending it out. We did this with our cactuses, we did this with the leaves on our um, Georgia O'Keeffe painting last week. So you are familiar. I'm starting with just those two lines and I'm cleaning my brush off just have water on my brush 
and I'm only staying in that top shape. I'm using that water to blend out the color. And I'm okay with some kind of white showing because with gemstones, the white is kind of that shine that happens when the light hits it. So the, the more areas where you have it really light and almost white, it'll look like the gem is shiny. I'm adding a little blue to my purple for my next shape. And I'm going to not do the shape right next to the one I just did. And you know why? It's because if we do, this edge is gonna start blending with that other one. And we want to keep those edges nice and crisp and clean. So we need to wait a little bit for that to dry before we do that one. So I'm gonna do this one. And because it's such a tiny shape, I'm actually going to come up and do this one too. Just so I don't waste my paint. And you know what? What the heck? I'm going to do this one too. Okay. Rinsing off my brush. Blending out with just a little water. The paint that I put on. I'm dabbing my paintbrush on the towel between things because I had just a little too much water and these are such tiny little shapes I just don't really need a lot at all. slightly warmer purple. I added a little bit of red to it.
my first gemstone is done. There is my finished project of my gemstones, and now we will learn how to draw a crystal. So here's a previous one I completed. This is a clump of crystals that grows naturally. Um, you might see them in caves, and I'm going to show you how to create a version of that yourself. So our first step is to create one large front crystal. You need two parallel lines and a point on the top. Now we're going to have one coming out from behind it. So part of that one will be covered by the front one. Okay. And the third will be coming out a little bit higher up, I decided. I'm behind that one. Now we're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep adding some behind, and maybe even a few that are lower down and shorter, such as this one, that will be in front of that really tall one. Remember, I'm using a really dark um, pencil because I was hoping that would help you see it, but I want you to draw light till you get it right, and then you can make it darker. One more short one down here. Okay, as you can see, they don't—they're not sitting on anything right now. I didn't make the bottoms of them. So what I'm going to do to make the bottoms is make kind of just this kind of lumpy, ziggy zaggy line. That's kind of like the the dirt or the base that they're growing out of. like that. Alright. Now 
we need to make some lines to make them look more three-dimensional because right now they are very flat. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a dot that's lower than if you were to cross a line there and make a triangle at the top. You want that dot lower than that. And then lines up. So it's almost like an extra pointy diamond shape. And then we're gonna draw a line from the top point to that point that we made so that we have a top. And then this will be parallel down to the bottom. If it's overlapped by another gem, then you would stop the line there. They don't have to be exactly in the middle because you want it to look natural and not all gems grow exactly the same. So I'm starting with that point and then I'm making my triangles at the top and one line down parallel to these lines. Make sure that they're parallel. One, two, three, and one line down. One, two, three, one line down. One, two, three, one line down. One, two, three, one line down. So, I just decided that I want a couple of them to be a little bit, they're going to have another line in there. Um, so I'm going to erase. In fact, I want my front one to have an extra facet. So instead of just one dot, you're actually going to make two dots. And you do the same thing. One, two, three, one line down. So it's got this extra facet there. Do that one more time over here. I have to erase this line here. First. One, two, three. One line down. There. So now they've got a couple different facets instead of just. Alright, so we've drawn our crystals and we're going to paint them very similar to how we painted our other gems. Just one more view of that finished crystal to show you how you do the bottom. You're going to do a wet on wet and you're going to use kind of an earthy tone to do that. I used mostly brown, I did put a little bit of blue in the shadows. So for my geode or agate slice, I am going to be starting with a really, really light wash. Again, you're going to want to have kind of a palette of analogous colors, although you might use some darker colors and some complementary colors in there. Trying to make my shape look natural. Okay. 
Okay, so I have a wet wash that is still wet. Now I'm going to come in and add some darker colors around the edges. If you look at agates and geodes, I'm not really sure what the difference is to be honest, so if you guys know the difference, please let me know on Google Classrooms. Um, you'll notice that they have kind of a darker edge because that's the outside of the rock. Seeing that I'm already starting to not do this fast enough because my wet wash is drying. Go with it. We got one side that's a little more blended than the other, and that's okay. I'm gonna get a darker version of my purple. I'm actually adding a tiny bit of brown to it. going to go towards the center. And kind of make a concentric shape. So concentric means that it's like similar to parallel to the shape that I made on the outside, only on the inside. to my smaller brush now. Add a little bit even more dark darkness to that center thing. And re-wet a couple spots because I want to add some salt. I know we love adding salt to our watercolors. It has to be wet. Or that salt will not do anything. So I'm just straight up taking my salt shaker from downstairs in the kitchen. And I added some salt to that. Now that needs to dry before we move on to the next step. So my watercolor I get is mostly dried and now I'm going to come in with my smaller brush and add some details. Mainly, I want to use concentric circles following the contour that I made already to add those different Let that dry, and if you wanted to add a little more details, you could, but that is about it.